This is Eli's journey, and it's one that could not have been made without the incredible generosity of blood donors and a very special marrow donor. This is Eli's journey, told through the words of his mother, Mary Ann Lana, and his marrow donor, Denise Ferzan. It's a story of a cowboy, Eli Bennett Lana, and how he came to be a bone marrow transplant survivor. When Eli was born on December 4, 2004, his parents braced for the worst. They knew through ultrasounds that their baby had a hand-arm abnormality. Despite his physical differences, Eli was a healthy, happy baby. As Eli grew, there were a few hand surgeries, each successful. Nothing slowed him down. In September 2010, Eli entered kindergarten with his charming disposition and a book bag almost as big as he was. Eli loved school and excelled in every way until January 2011 when Eli became ill. A high fever and cough kept him out of school for a few days, but over the weekend it seemed to ease. By Monday he was back in class. But Monday afternoon, a heavily fatigued Eli trudged off the bus and fell asleep on the couch. Within the hour, he had a raging fever. The next morning, the pediatrician said it was pneumonia. But one day passed, then two, and there was no real improvement. Each night, he was covered in sweat. Each day, his fever spiked again. On Thursday night, February 3rd, he bumped his face in a fall. The resulting bruise was startling. The next morning, the pediatrician ordered blood work, and within an hour, the phone call came with alarming news. Eli's blood counts were dangerously low. Over the next several weeks, Eli's family was submerged in the world of hematology oncology. Eli was put into isolation. His immune system was virtually useless. All precautions were taken as they searched for a cause and for a blood marrow donor. The diagnosis, Fanconi anemia, a rare genetic disorder for which there is no cure. A bone marrow transplant would fix what Eli called his goofy blood. The waiting continued through the end of April 2011. Eli could wait no longer. He was dependent on red blood and platelet transfusions to sustain his life. Without blood donors and without a bone marrow transplant, he would die. Eli and his family were in Cincinnati, where Eli was a patient of the Fanconi Anemia Comprehensive Clinic. It was here, in a tiny room, while Eli was next door under sedation for another bone marrow biopsy, that the nurse informed Eli's family a donor was found, and willing, able, and eager to save Eli's life. Eli survived and is doing well thanks to a bone marrow donor and dozens of blood donors who kept him well enough to fight his illness. Hello, my name is Jen Wallahan and I'm an account manager with the Rhode Island Blood Center. My job is to educate the community on the importance of giving blood and I'm here at your school today because you have a blood drive coming up. If you have never donated blood before, you are probably wondering what you can expect. Although the actual blood draw takes only a few minutes, the entire donation process takes about an hour. There are four steps to giving blood and before donating, you want to make sure you are well hydrated and eat prior to giving. Step one is registration, where you fill out a questionnaire about your general health history, travel, medications, etc. Step two is interview, and this is a step like a mini physical. A staff member from the Rhode Island Blood Center will go over your questionnaire. Everything you share is confidential, and we do not share with your parents or the school. Our staff member will take your temperature, your blood pressure, and test your iron levels to make sure that you as a donor are healthy enough to give. Step three is the actual donation with the needle in the arm. And this only takes a few minutes, and it feels like a simple pinch of the arm. If you're well hydrated, this step will go by fast, and you will feel better afterwards. The last step is refreshment, where we thank you for your gift of saving three lives. Great job! Now you're going to take it easy for the rest of the day, and we're going to give you some juice and cookies. Make sure to stay well hydrated throughout the day. To donate blood, you must be at least 16 years or older. 16-year-olds must weigh at least 130 pounds or more, and you will need a parental permission slip signed by Guardian, or you can get from our website, ribc.org, or they're available at your school. If you are 17 years or older, you must weigh at least 110 pounds or more, and depending on your school's policy, you may need a form to give on school property. If you have any questions regarding giving blood, please call 453-8307 or visit our website. Every day people need blood and our mission is to make sure the blood is always available for them. Please give the gift of life at your school and be a hero.
A year and a half ago, I was 17 years old, and um, on the way home from skiing, I fell asleep at the wheel. And I hit a tree on the highway and basically lost my life. No matter how healthy, active, and happy you are, you never know when your life might suddenly change. I had no idea, and I'm sure that most people don't. You know, I walk into a room of people, and one of the first things that comes to my mind is maybe someone in here saved my life. I just don't know. And um, I think that that's the wonderful mystery about it. Um, I am so thankful for people donating blood because I was given another chance to live.